side. Gets a block down the sideline. And sold. Touchdown. Colorado upset 13 ranked Penn State. Center left foot shot off the post. Taking on the line. Go for the Buffaloes. Seven blitz. Tully oh. speed in trouble. The ball's loose. Scooped up by Colorado and a big man running all the way in. The same play, that screen to Shane Field to the right side. He breaks it around the block, running at a 45. It's a foot race, and they're not going to get him. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! And Shane Fields is putting on a show here in Boulder this afternoon. Well, it was a big day for Shea Fields. A couple of the Buffalo's fields, 169 yards receiving, three touchdowns. Montez was great. Defense was great. In fact, I'm not sure if any aspect of this football team didn't play well. Welcome into the Stampede. Mark Johnson along with Gary Barnett. The Buffaloes are 4-1, 2-0 in Pac-12 conference play as they dominate the Beavers of Oregon State 47-6. to Use the uh, term on the radio, complete ball game for the Buffaloes. I think the only part of this game that wasn't excellent and complete was maybe you and I and our <laughs> well, broadcast. That's given, yes. I mean, yeah, it's given, <laughs> but that's what we fight for. Isn't it? You know, it was a complete game, and uh, you saw Shea Fields make that run, and Devin Ross blocked two guys, gotten two guys' way to, to break that thing, and I think we saw a lot of that all day. We saw receivers blocking for running backs. We saw running backs blocking for receivers. We had a great job with the offensive line defensively. Uh, you know, everybody fit where they were supposed to fit. We had very few breakdowns. You know, you don't get too many, and this is the second one you and I have talked about this year in five games. Yeah, the Idaho State game was a complete game as well. Awful impressive, though. You go against a Power 5 team in Oregon State, and you don't give up a touchdown to a team like that. And that's some pretty rarefied defensive error, too. It is, and uh, you don't turn the ball over. And, uh, you know, it, these guys are playing at a high level. And we saw last week that when they had to play for 60 minutes, they could play for 60 minutes. And we saw this week when they didn't need to play for 60 minutes, they could get the job done in just the amount, right amount of time to let everybody else play. You know, this, this team's hitting on all cylinders. I think coaches are hitting on all cylinders. And uh, it's a good feeling when it's, it's like driving an automatic transmission as opposed to a stick where you got to do everything. You got two, two feet and three pedals, yep. you know, and you still yep. got to do this. Well, they don't have to do that now. These kids are on, they're on, they're on, uh, uh, cruise speed control. Cruise yeah. control. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Buffalo has also got a great performance out of the young quarterback once again. Nearly 300 yards, three touchdowns by Steven Montez. This young man has got some talent, doesn't he? He does. And he's and he, I think he's just getting better every week, too. And, you know, we saw him today uh, throw the ball away when he needed to throw, throw it away. We saw him not throw any foolish balls. We saw him uh, play heads up in the audible game. We saw him you know, there were a couple times when they had the swing passes out there and he had somebody in his face and he'd sling it under or he'd go it over. You know, he's just learning how to take care of business and how to be effective. Steven Montez has been impressive. Now, we don't know what's going to happen. Cephalufa has still got the ankle injury and that's going to be week to week kind of thing. But they're in good hands regardless to where they're playing. You know, the other thing is we talk about injuries. Diego Gonzalez goes down. The bus might have found themselves a kicker today. How about this young man? Davis Price, a 54 yard field goal in his first college attempt. Well, that was impressive. And what I was impressed with was his extra points were up right now. And he kicked the ball off well against a guy that we, we, we begged him not to kick to. Uh, they didn't listen to us, but uh, they knew what they were doing because Davis Price can kick the ball. Yeah. And by the way, that guy that uh, Gary's talking about it was Victor Bolden, who came in as the top kick returner in America. Explosive. He'd had touchdowns on returns, rushing, receiving. They made him a non factor today in many respects. Well, you could say that about the whole Oregon State team. That's true, they became yes. non factors. Yeah. They bloodied our nose in the first drive. I think we needed that to wake up. I bet if the buff coaches on offense could replay the first three plays of that game, they'd all three be runs. And uh, we may never have been in that situation. So uh, you learn. But that, that may have been the only series that really wasn't a good series for the Buffs was the first series of the game. Yeah, they got backed up deep in their own field two or three times. It was the only three and out for the Buffaloes uh, in the ball game. Big challenge this week. Now, the Buffs did win in a hostile environment against a great program last week, Oregon. Now, this week, they get the win. Now, they go off to USC at the Coliseum next week. Big challenge. Well, and they're, and they're playing a team that's struggling, yeah. you know, frankly. And that's that's a dangerous thing when an animal's 
wounded, and that's what SC is like, is they're wounded because they got so much talent. And, and these guys know how much talent they have, and they're going home. A lot of them are going home. Uh, distractions abound, uh, and they, if they handle themselves the way they've handled themselves every week, there won't be an issue. But as a coach, you've got to safeguard that as much as you can. You've got to control everything you can control. But uh, it's a hostile environment. I don't think it's hostile probably as what they faced in Oregon. Sure. Uh, or Michigan. Or Michigan. So, you know, they've, they've been bloodied. They, they know what it's like now, and now it's up to them to go play their ball. Boy, the Buffaloes have been impressive. 4-1 and one for the first time since 2005 as they dominate the Oregon State Beavers, 47-6. to six. Next week at USC, that's a 2 o'clock Mountain Time game. Gary and I, along with Bobby Passavano, are going to hit the air at noon Mountain Time on the Colorado Football Network with all the action. For the coach, I'm Mark Johnson. We'll continue on the Stampede next. We're going to talk to Jay McIntyre, who's been awful good as a punt returner and a receiver. That'll uh, happen next here on the Stampede. I think we just raced pretty well as a team. We went out conservative and we were able to run fast the last mile. The course was in really good condition and the weather was really good. It got a little hot towards the end, but um, I don't think it was enough to seriously impact performances. I mean, I think we had good expectations for today, but we realized it's not like a championship race, so we just treated it kind of like a really hard workout. I think we all race good, so I think that we can run better than our preseason ranking. I don't think a lot of teams expect us to be as strong as we as we think we are. Yeah, I think that going into the end of the season, we're going to have some good races. The coaches told me uh, the day before that there was only a couple women who had run under 20, and you know, I knew I was 2013 last year, and you know, I was fitter this year, and I would have more people pushing me, so that was the goal coming in, and I'm excited to have hit that. <laughs> a lot of high aspirations for the senior year, so I think I'm setting up the way it needs to be set up and seeing how well our other girls finished. Um, we were really running as a pack strong there for quite a while, so I think it um, sets up really well for the team, and I'm just really excited for what we can do. <laughs> I have very high expectations. I, I think we can win it, and I think if we do the right things and you know we train smart and we recover when we're supposed to, uh, I think we'll be ready to go when the day comes. <laughs> Boy, it's a great week for that cross-country team. Both teams ranked number five. And how about Aaron Clark, by the way? 3.6 miles in under 20 minutes. Jay McIntyre is joining us from the football team, the wide receiver. Can you run three miles in under 20 minutes? Probably not. <laughs> not. Not a chance? No. My dad had me running on the beach and all that stuff, but no way. <laughs> no way. Well, I see, do that. he's a receiver. He's got to run about maybe 30, 35 yards at a time, right? Yeah, yeah, 30, 35 <laughs> yards, and then, and then uh, take a deep breath and then go again. But <laughs> there you go. All at once. I hey, don't know. the buff. Speaking of rankings, how about Colorado? For the first time in 11 years, ranked right, number 21 in the country with the AP and number 23 in the coaches' pool. That, that's outstanding. And I guess that's just an indicator of how well this team is playing right now. Yeah, we're really happy that we got in the polls. Um, that's just something that we're getting recognized for uh, how well we've done this year. But it's not going to stop there. We, we're not we're not satisfied there. And uh, we want to keep moving forward and uh, not look at the rankings, but rather look at ourselves and just keep moving forward and getting better. Buffalo's coming off that lopsided win over Oregon State last week. This offense is the top 15 offense in the country. Had nearly 600 yards, over 300 yards passing, 250 rushing. This thing's hitting on all cylinders right now. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Chev and Lingren have done a great job getting our playmakers in space, and uh, a lot of guys are making plays, and it's been real good this season, and hopefully we keep it up. You know, and a quarterback situation, you've had two guys that have been Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week. Of course, Seppo Lou found Steven Montez. Seppo's coming back from injury. It, it doesn't seem to matter who's who's pulling the trigger out there. I guess it's all because your receivers are so outstanding. Oh, well, we do have a great group of receivers, <laughs> but our quarterbacks are great. I mean, both yeah. of them are really good. They both bring different things to the table, and they've all they've all succeeded in great ways. So yeah, I guess yeah. it just speaks to how good both of those guys are at this point. When you start talking about a ranked football team, Jay, and I know you, you get you get the fact your dad can kind of temper everything, but as a team, you guys understand that it's kind of a you know one week at a time type deal, right? Definitely. That's what my uh, Coach Mack has been preaching, uh, <laughs> my dad. <yeah. laughs> but uh, every every week's a new week. We, uh, you know, Chev's been uh, preaching one snap and clear. It's one game and clear for us, and we just keep moving forward. And uh, this week's a new week, and uh, USC's on our mind this week. So. Boy, Jay has been getting a lot of conversation from Coach Gary Barnett during our radio broadcast. Coach is, is raving about what you've done as a punt returner out there. Coach always says, he goes, hey, anytime you got a punt returner that's giving you about 
a first down per return, which you're at about 10 yards per return, that really helps out. You've been very successful out there. Yeah, I, I, going in the year, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. I know we had a bunch of guys doing it, so I'm glad I won the job. And uh, my dad was a punt returner, my uncle was a punt returner, my uh, grandfather was a punt returner. It's in the blood there. Yeah, so it's, and my brother's now returning punts <laughs> at, at Monarch High School, so we're all returning punts, and it's in the blood, and I've really enjoyed it back there, and hopefully I keep it up. Well, what is the key for a position like that? I've always said it's a crazy job. You got your head up in the air, you're staring at the sky, you got guys that are bearing down here, they want to kill you. That's an awful difficult thing to do. It's more nerve-wracking on the sidelines watching it than being yeah. out there. Once you get out there, the ball's in the air, you forget everything, and you kind of just look at the ball, and your mind's on the ball, and you catch it, and you know, that's as simple as that. After that, you kind of see by the ball, like if it's, if it's a deep one by the spiral, you can tell if you're going to return it or not. But uh, it, once you get back there, it, it calms your nerves a little bit. Easier to catch a spiral punt or one that's rotating? I would say spiral just because I'm so used to that, uh, Alex Kinney kicking spirals deep. I mean, that guy can kick them. Yeah, yeah he can daylight's the out of it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I've been catching them all fall camp, so then uh, when I got to the game, it was easy. So uh, he's been helping me out. Big game this weekend. Colorado's got to go to the Coliseum to take on a very talented USC team. Give us a comment about that one. I think they're a great team. You know, they always got players. Um, we're going to go in there, you know, with the mindset it's, it's us. And uh, if we, don't, if we do our thing, we're going to win the game. That's how we feel, and uh, that's how we're going to go in there. So we're excited. You know, I talk about how it's great being a buff right now. We talk cross country. We talk football. How about that volleyball team, ranked team? They beat number 12 UCLA this past week. I know you cheer for all the buff teams. Oh, yeah. I'm always at buff games. Uh, been to a couple of volleyball games. Really good friends with a couple of volleyball players. Uh, they're having a great year. I'm really excited for that program and where they're going. Well, so is this football team. You keep up the good work, all right? Yes, sir. All right. That's receiver Jay McIntyre. As we continue here in the Stampede, we're going from Jay to Shea. Number one's going to join us. He had a big ball game against those Beavers as well. We'll continue here in the Stampede after this. There's a shotgun stamp play action. He pumps, steps up, now rears back, rifles it downfield. Shea Fields wide open. There's the grab of the five. End zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Colorado. A heavy dose of running the ball. The secondary began to suck up, and the bus throw it over the top. That's a strike. Over Oregon State last week, Colorado now ranked in the top 25. Shea Fields joining us. What's it like to be fast? <laughs> I have no idea what that must feel like to be able to run that way. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's just a God-given <laughs> talent. I just thank God for it. I mean, he, he gives me the ability to fly, so I just fly. You know, the, the long one you had uh, on the little screen, uh -huh. Devin Ross blew up a couple of receivers oh, on yeah. defensive backs out there, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he kind of took that safety for me. Then I kind of made a move on the corner. He hit him also, so it was yeah. perfect. Good stuff. This offense is clicking on all cylinders right now, isn't it? I mean, you guys had almost 600 yards against the Beavers, 250 rushing over 300 yards uh, passing in that ball mm -hmm. game I mean it seems like right now everything's working offensively I mean I mean it's just, it just comes with practice preparation uh, I mean it doesn't really happens on Saturdays it happens during the week like coach Max says Monday through Friday we practice it and we just go out there and rep it in the game that's it when do you know when you're lining up offensively look across from you mm -hmm. when it's one-on-one -on -one, are you kind of licking your chops at that point I mean, I'm always licking my chops, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the ball comes my way, we just make a play. That's, that's pretty much what the receivers do. What changes when you got a different quarterback? I mean, Steph, who's been out there, he's had success. Steven Montez the last couple of weeks has had success. Does it change at all for you guys that are catching the football? Uh, it, it doesn't really change at all. We, we kind of don't mind who's that quarterback. Uh, whether it's Montez or Sefo, they, they both make smart decisions. They both get the ball out fast. And uh, it just matters of who, who it comes to, really. Whoever it comes to, they make the play from those two. Buffalo's ranked number 21 of the AP poll, number 23 in the coaches poll, first time in 11 years. What does that mean for you guys? I mean, it's always exciting to be ranked, but uh, we still have a lot of work to do. That. That's not where we want to finish. We want to finish lower, but we just got to take it one game at a time. So, You know, we're always interested in what Shea Fields has to say, and we're always interested in what B.G. Brooks has to say. Contributing editor at CUBuffs.com. Let's find out what B.G.'s got on his mind. Hi, this is B.G. Brooks with CUBuffs.com. If you had noticed, the Buffaloes are playing good football, winning football, and not coming close in losing football. That's a change from past seasons. They're four and one and currently ranked number 21 in the weekly top 25. That's a great departure from years past. They're two and oh in the South Division and atop that division, but they've got their sights set higher. They're looking at a Pac-12 championship, which makes this weekend's trip to Southern California an even more pivotal game. USC has slapped around the buffs for the past five meetings. With the exception of last year in Boulder, 
when the margin of victory shrank to three points. In the first two meetings when CU was a conference member, the average margin of victory for the Trojans was 35 points. That's a big difference and CU is on the cusp according to everybody who's watched them, of making some real noise in the Pac-12 South. The Buffs think they can win the Pac-12. And if you don't think so, it's something you ought to consider. This is a team that's playing with confidence, playing well, and making a statement. It's all the more reason for Saturday's game to be a validation game for the Buffs in thinking they can win. All right, thanks, BG. We're here with uh, Shea Fields in the Buffalo Stampede, Colorado number 21 in the country in the AP poll, number 23 in the coaches' poll, and now it's a big road game. Got to go back to uh, where Shea grew up, back in the L.A. area. He's from Carson, California. He's the Buffs are at the Coliseum to take on USC. What's a game like this mean for you, for a California guy? <laughs> I mean, you always want to go back home, especially everybody on the team. I mean, most of us are from California. We want to go back and get a win in front of our friends and family. But uh, it was just going to take it one game at a time, like I stated earlier. Just uh, be ready, be focused. When you're from California, though, you go back to play a USC or UCLA. Is mm -hmm. there are there distractions that go along with that? I imagine a lot of families going to be there looking for extra tickets, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's always distractions. Uh, I kind of told my dad and mom, uh, I might not have enough tickets for you because there's a lot of Cali people, <laughs> but <laughs> might have to buy some tickets. Hey, what, tell me about what you see from USC. They always have athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you see from them? Uh, they're, they're an athletic team. Uh, Young quarterback, uh, great receivers, great DBs. It's gonna, it's gonna be a dogfight to us, but uh, I mean, we just got to come out, punch them in the mouth, and do what we do. Honestly, you know, I've used this phrase before, though, and I think Coach Mack has done a great job with you guys. Not allowing you to get drunk in your mm -hmm. own wine, right? Oh, I yeah. mean, it's it's always oh, kind yeah. of a, a week you look to go one and zero. You see, stay focused mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, I mean, he kind of preached it to us. Uh, just, I mean, it's just a number, honestly. It's right. just a number. We just want to play football, get the wins as they come week by week, and just be ready, honestly. Yeah. And, and you guys have got the ability to go out there and kind of maintain control of the South Division if you take care of business. Yeah, especially especially yeah. if we stay focused, especially with the upperclassmen, kind of keeping us level-headed and uh, just being ready for SE and then following week. So. You know, we've been talking uh, on the show here about how great CU Athletics is doing overall. That soccer team's won seven straight. They've got Oregon coming up on Thursday. How about that? Keep it rolling. That's all I can say. Keep it rolling. <laughs> Rolling, bus. Yeah, keep it rolling soccer, keep it rolling football, right? <laughs> true, true, true. Right, keep it rolling. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you, thank All you. Right, that's wide receiver Shea Fields. He had a big game against the Beavers. We're going to talk some basketball coming up next. Wesley Gord is going to join us from the CU men's basketball team after a break here in the Stampede. Busy weekend for the Buffs, and you can follow all of it by checking out the media schedule at cubuffs.com. Soccer kicks off the week against Oregon on Thursday at 3.30, and it'll be live streamed through Twitter in the first broadcast of its kind for the Buffaloes. Volleyball is on the road at Stanford this Friday. First serve is 7 p.m. Mountain and is live on the Pac-12 Network. Football is also on the road in California as the number 21 Buffaloes take on USC this Saturday at 2 p.m., also live on the Pac-12 Network and the Colorado Football Network. Two games on Sunday as soccer takes on Oregon State at 1 p.m. again, streamed live through cubuffs.com. And volleyball rounds out the weekend at Cal. That 4 p.m. Mountain Time match is being broadcast on the Pac-12 Network. As always, you can check out cubuffs.com for all upcoming games and where you can watch them. Up, three ball is on the way. Shot at the front of the iron. Oh, the follow jam! High in the air with the right hand as Wesley Gordon slams it down for two. How did he get up there that high for the putback? From the thunder of that putback by Wesley Gordon to the serenity of Varsity Pond here at the University of Colorado, there's a reason it's the most beautiful campus in all of college athletics. Wesley Gordon is here. CU men's basketball team getting underway with practice last week. How's that been for you? I mean, it's always exciting when practice yeah, gets underway. It's exciting to get back with the guys and start practice again. So it's really exciting just to know the season's coming around the corner. You know, we, we've become so accustomed over the last few years. You know, Josh Scott was such a big part of this program. Right. You guys came in together. Now he's not here. That means right. this is your team now, right? Is that the way it works? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was fortunate enough to get it down, passed along to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, there, there becomes a new leadership element with what you've got to do now being an right. upperclassman, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, just taking more of the leadership role now that he's gone. So. Just 
just really just filling his shoes as a leadership part. Now, how are you? Are you, are you a taskmaster as a leader? I mean, are you, are you really kind of laying down the law for these guys, or are yep. you more of a by-example kind of guy? I'm more of an example of a guy, you know. <laughs> I let XJ do the talking. I'm, <laughs> well, I'm yeah. the force. Yeah, know, I was going to so. say, that, that makes sense. XJ's yeah. always got something to say, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so he, he does the talking. I'm the enforcer, you know. What does that mean, though, for your game? I mean, I think you're going to be called upon more. I've talked with Coach Boy a little bit. Right. Called more upon, scoring some points, being right. more of a leader on the court, grab more rebounds. I mean, there's a responsibility that comes with that. Yeah, uh, really just more opportunity for me and for other guys as well to step up. Josh, XT, and all those guys were a big part of our team. Now that they're gone, somebody else is going to have to step up. And so it's going to be... It's going to work in our favor. All right, so we're looking for you inside on the interior. Oh. There's a lot of conversation about this Derek White guy. Uh, yeah. What's going on with him? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's good. I mean, <laughs> he, he's real good. You guys, will, you guys will soon see. But overall, this team's got a lot of talent. Right. I mean, Wes, when you look at this squad right now, this thing could be a lot of fun this season. Right, yeah. We, we got a lot of uh, basketball players, a lot of guys that, that are they're not position-based. They can play inside, outside. They can do a lot of things. So I think this is the most versatile team we had since I've been here. I'd have to imagine that means getting the ball up and down the court at a yeah. relatively high pace. Yeah, we're going to be we're gonna be real fast this year. We're going to get up and down, try to wear teams out with our speed. So it's going to be exciting. Hey, I do know this, though. Being around Coach Boyle, you guys better play some defense. Yeah, oh, now, now, a lot of offensive power, but can you yeah, fellas play some yeah, defense yeah, now? Absolutely. If we can't, you won't <laughs> see the floor. So <laughs> most definitely defense is the first thing on our mind. Yeah, over the course of four years, I guarantee you, Wes has learned that lesson, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely have. Yeah. <laughs> How have you improved, do you think, now going into your senior year? Uh, I improved my decision-making and just uh, capitalizing more on my opportunities that present itself for me. You've always been a very instinctive a basketball player on the, on the defensive end, though, haven't you? Right, yeah. yeah. Where does that come from? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I probably my dad. All right. He, uh, he always used to tell me that a lot of guys can score, so if you can stop them from scoring, that makes you different from everybody else. Boy, he, and he's done that about as well as anybody in the Pac-12 conference on the defensive end. You know, the Buffs men got underway last week. The women under J.R. Payne got underway this week. In fact, they just had their community service day. The WBCA Day of Service is always um, fun to do. We're here packaging up some goods and giving back to the community and having a good time. So we right now are packaging corn and we are doing eggs. So half of us are putting uh, corn on the cob then bags and the other half is packaging eggs and getting them set up and ready to go out. Okay, so it's 8 to 12 in a bag just like this. Okay. And if it's not good, put it in the black bin down there. What's the bad? This is my third year doing this. Uh, last year we did this the year before as well. And it's always fun to come out as a team and do something that, you know, we're bonding while also giving back to the community. And we get to meet new people. And they're always so welcoming and warm here whenever we come here. And just a great group of um, young women that I have behind me. And we're all like, we're just very chill with each other, and it's always nice to be back to the community and um, have a good time doing it. So that's always a joy to experience. Good to see the CU women's team contributing to the community. They got a new coach, and I know you're around those uh, women's players quite a bit. They're going to be all right this season, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to they're going to be good as well. You know, it's exciting just for our basketball, both men and women. So it'll be exciting. Good, uh, good time to be a Colorado Buffalo, undoubtedly. Hey, you know, we look ahead of the schedule with the men's team. You guys open up on November 11th, Sacramento State in town, but you look at the non-conference slate: Xavier, Notre Dame, Texas potentially is on that. Colorado State here. You got to go to BYU. That's an awful, challenging schedule you guys right. got this year. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're ready for it. We don't we don't want an easy schedule. We want we want to test right away. So it's going to be exciting just to see how we compare towards the other great teams around the country. So we're, we're excited for it. We're looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing what you can do. Good luck this season. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. That's the senior Wesley Gordon here. The Buffaloes again open up the campaign against Sacramento State on November 11th. Again, the Colorado football team is at USC on Saturday. That is a 2 o'clock kickoff. And we'll hit the air at noon with the Buffalo Stampede on the Colorado Football Network. We'll talk to you next time here on the Stampede.